Welcome back into my studio and to a new drawing. This is a speed painting or a speed drawing video taken from my Patreon long, really in-depth video. I think it's about four hours on Patreon. So this is, as I said, a, a really speeded up version of it. But I think it gives you a nice overview of exactly how I did this drawing and created that really wet look as well. So I hope you enjoy it and let's take a look and see exactly how I did it. As always, I transferred my drawing onto my pastel mat paper. And then something I like to do fairly frequently is put in the brightest highlights or where the light areas are and where some of the dark areas are as well. It helps me with that tonal range. Now I did most of this, or I think all of this one actually, in pencils. Sometimes, or very frequently, I, I use pan pastels for underlayers, but this is quite a small drawing and I like to give people different alternatives. So on my videos I show how to use pans or just pencils or a combination of both or even soft pastels as well. So you don't have to keep going out then and purchasing different supplies. You can use what you want. Very often in the first stages when I'm using pencils I'm using them on this side. I don't want any really um, distinct marks on there. I'm just blending colours down into the surface. Now for the eye, I really built up the layers, going mainly from dark to light. And I did the eye early on, quite detailed, quite realistic, because when you do that in one area of a drawing, I find that I then kind of challenge myself to keep up to that standard for the rest of the drawing. So it's nice, or I find it nice. Sometimes I don't do it all the time, to actually get one area pretty much complete before I do the rest of the drawing. Now there's lots of dark browns in here, very rich dark browns as well, which you don't really find in pastel pencils. So on that case, I then put in a black and then a brown on top to try and get that really rich dark brown. Now the way I got the actual texture on the skin was to put in the main basic colour, so the, the middle tone green. And then with pastels, what we generally do then is work upwards from dark to light. So that's where I'm layering the lighter colours or the lighter tones on top. Now that's one of the main advantages we've got with pastels and using pastel matte paper. The paper takes so many layers that I can keep adding layers on top of it. And that's really effective and useful for doing fur, which I show a lot of on my uh, Patreon channel, but also for doing these skin textures as well. Now some people find that when they're using a textured paper like pastel mat, that they can get a grittiness or grainy appearance on the paper. And what's happening there is they're not blending the initial layers in. So when you put the basic color down, you need to blend that in with your fingers or with paper stumps to push it down into the lower layers of the tooth of the paper. You're not filling the paper up at all with pastel, but you're pushing it down in and that graininess then goes and you can always put more layers on top and get your details that way. Now the fun part of this drawing was using all of those vibrant yellows and greens and rich browns. You don't usually get to use those on lots of wildlife so to do an amphibian was really exciting and because pastels are very opaque a drawing like this doesn't take that long. Now the question I get asked more than any other is which are the best pencils to use and to purchase and as you can see here I'm using lots of different brands but my main two are Carbothello and Pitt. Now to get the shiny wet appearance you need bright white highlights. So on those areas if I need something that's going to be really white I'd make sure I don't have any other coloured pastel underneath there or if I do it's only a very small amount and that allows me to get that real pure colour. Now as you can see I'm working from top left down pretty much to bottom right because I'm right-handed, so if you're left-handed, you may want to do it the opposite way. Um, 
and that's just so that I'm not resting my hand actually on the areas that I've already drawn. So there's my pencils. Obviously in the long video, which as I said is about four hours long, I go really into depth and detail on how I'm doing everything. A lot of the video is in real time. Now something that really makes this video work is the blues that's in the very dark areas, in the dark markings. You can clearly see those those blue markings and that's what really lifts this drawing and makes it something a bit extra special than just doing the black markings. Now lots of these blues as well, especially on the surface, you see that purpley blue color on the top. That's the actual blue sky or something blue bright light above the frog and that's creating that wetness okay so you've got to look out for subtle things like that in your reference photos here you can see again how I've worked from a darker undertone or mid-tone and then layering the lights on top just like it's happening in nature the highlights are sitting on top of the surfaces And here you can see I'm getting that orange, that warm brown orange by layering different colors. Don't expect your pencil set, even if you've got three or four different brands and you've got the full sets, don't expect to be able to pick out exact colors. You generally need to overlay them to uh, get the colors that you want, very much like if you was doing oil painting. So you really mix in a layer on top of another. Here I'm using my new pastel stick that creates very, very dark blacks. These days I'm using Cretacolor uh, pastel chalk in black and white because they are just as dark as the new pastels, but I've got the ability then to sharpen them very easily. Now I put a bit of the background in before I start to put in the back of the frog in. Just so I could judge the tonal values more easily in that area. And here you can see it only starts to look wet, these areas, when I put the highlights on top. And look how much black, uh, blue I'm putting in these areas that you would think were just black. See, there's even some quite vibrant pinks in there as well. Now that reflected area, that's done just the same as the actual leg above. I've missed out that distracting leaf that we can see blurred in the corner. And now starting to layer in the leaves this frog is sitting on. And then here I'm using pastel sticks because the one thing you won't find easily with uh, the pencils is very dark browns so sometimes very dark browns in sticks is worth adding to your sets and even in the pan pastels you won't find a very dark rich brown either okay so that's why it's, it's great with pastels because we can use the pencils the sticks and pan pastels if we want we can have all of those and use them all together on a piece now to get the nice smooth background, I put a layer of pencil on, blend it in, then come back with another layer of pencil and blend that again. So you see you keep building up the layers and the more layers you put on the background, the softer the appearance you can get. And I want nice soft edges as well to the leaves that's in the background. The only thing I want to be in really sharp focus is the actual center of interest, the frog itself. Everything else I want to have a a lot of blue, especially in the background. Adding more multiple layers to the background, getting it even smoother. And the same with the edges of the leaves, and then I'm blending in the direction of those leaves so I'm not smudging out too much. Then I can come back in and really detail up and finesse the outline edge and start to put all these little lumps and bumps in place. And you can see I'm using quite a vibrant blue. And 
working my way down the back. I like the stage when 99% of the work is done and then it's the real finesse that's going on there. And I usually find that before that stage, I have a break from the drawing. So I don't keep plowing through to rush to the end. I usually have a break so that I really enjoy the final stages and I can concentrate then as I am now on putting in the real subtle color changes that I'm seeing. You see I'm bringing that, that purple color down that's really enhancing that wet look that we see in on the back. And you usually find that a color on a subject like this is found in quite a few different areas. So it was on the top of the head, it was on the back, now it's coming down onto the leg. It's not usually just specific to one area. So always look at the reference really closely and see if you can find those colors in multiple areas. And generally you will. Okay, so usually the last thing that I put on is the pure white. That's generally the final stage of most of my drawings. And then I'll also look at the pure blacks as well. You know, if there's any pure blacks on there, because as I'm resting my hand on the drawing surface and I'm using that glassine paper underneath, as careful as I'm being, I can still smudge areas a little bit. And generally the, the colors that are affected more than anything are the darkest one so the blacks and the whites so those are generally the ones that need that extra bit of punch right at the end and now i'm coming in with some lighter blue so once again, that's a reflection from the sky above coming down onto that shiny surface. So we get lots and lots of bounce light and bounce colors going on. And when you've got a drawing like this, you can really, you can spend hours and hours putting on the fine touches. But in my drawings on my Patreon channel, I'm really showing you all the techniques so you can then apply that and take extra time with your own work and put it use it with your own subjects that's what I generally say to take the technique not necessarily copy something I've done but perhaps if you you want to do a different frog or a toad or another amphibian once you've seen the techniques then you can apply it to something that really excites you some more highlights now if you're struggling to put your whitest whites on that's when I go to something like a Karen Dash white because it's so soft. So it's got the advantage of being very opaque and very soft, but the disadvantage is that it can be so soft you can't really sharpen it to a fine point. And that's where I find the Creta color or what I'm using here, say a new pastel stick. You can sharpen them even sharper because they are very hard and they don't break so easily. Now add in a few more vibrant punchy colors as I'm putting in more of those final details. You see it's surprising that you can even have very bright or very rich browns in dark areas in shadow areas. And sometimes it's just small specks here and there. Like now I'm using, that's a very rich orangey brown colour. And you can see again how I'm finding multiple areas where that is in. It could be just on the edge of something black or on the tip of the mouth. A bit here. Even just little tiny touches in some places. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing this drawing come to life. As I said, this is a speed drawing or a speed video, so everything is 
gone really fast sometimes 40 times the speed but if you want to see videos like this in great detail where I'm giving lots of tips and techniques mainly in real time then I've got way over a thousand members on my patreon channel and I'll talk about that now on the end of the video just wanted to quickly mention my patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction it's packed full of pastel videos oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details you see everything I do how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well and this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details tips and techniques and as mentioned I've got lots of oil videos on there too so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just four dollars now over a thousand members strong Hope to see you there soon.